Joining me now on this episode of Locally Source CP is the one and only <laughs> Lou. What's going on, man? Ray, it's been too long, man. How are you doing? It's, I'm doing good, man. It has been too long. I, uh, for those of you who don't know, Lou and I used to work together a long time ago on, dang, make it, make it sound, make it, make us old, man. Uh, <laughs> we are old. We, <laughs> we, <laughs> we team, we were, we were all teamed up uh, with KDBC's morning show a while back. And might I add, I might be a little biased, but I think we kicked a lot of ass when we did that, man. I, I had a lot of fun. You know, we, uh, I don't know if you realize this, but we did move the needle. Yeah. Did you know that? I, you know? I remember I remember you guys talking about that and, and that mm -hmm. was that was just, that's just a cool accomplishment I think we did, especially for how bad it was back in back in the back then. Ray, you know what everybody forgets? Mm -hmm. I, I, I obviously don't. And I'm not sure you even remember this, but that wasn't what I was supposed to do when they hired me. No, I, I didn't I, know that. Yeah, I was hired to replace Jesse Blanco mm -hmm. as the 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. news anchor next to Nicole Ayub. Oh, so yeah. when I got to El Paso, there was about a month before Jesse's contract was up. Mm -hmm. And the previous ownership at KDBC said, well, you know, we're not going to fire Jesse, which is the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. We'll just let the contract expire and then you'll slide in when his contract is up. So I said, okay, well, in the meantime, why don't I just run around town and go get things that we, that we might need, you know, a video of garbage cans or for sale signs, or let me go do some interviews for, you know, whomever might need it. I mean, I'm an extra body, put me to work or even help out John Engelman, who was the sportscaster uh, at the time. I said, I can go help him, whatever you guys need, you know, I'm willing to do. And if you guys don't tell me, I'll do it on my own. Mm -hmm. And that's me, well, you know what? Why don't you go on the morning show and just get used to El Paso news. And I said, okay, well, I guess that makes sense. You know, it would save me a lot of research if I'm doing the morning newscast. Well, that went on for about a month and apparently it was going so well that they said, you know what, we want you to stay there. <laughs> and I said, well, hang on a second. I didn't sign up for, you know, coming into work at midnight or 1 a.m. They said, oh, no, everything stays the same and nothing changes with your contract or your pay but why don't you give this a try and see because the, the advertisers are happy and we're getting a lot of positive feedback. So I ended up staying on the morning and I don't know if you remember, but our format at that time was not like it is now at most mm -hmm. local morning news shows. Now that it's basically just news, news, news and what happened the day before where our show was, we had a theme, remember, for every yeah. day. Oh, you I know? remember. <laughs> yeah, and it was, it was fun. You know, we taught people how to pick out the right nursing home for your mom and dad who might be getting at that age or how do you properly tip right. believe it or not but it's a it's an important topic topic for waiters and waitresses who are trying to make a living what do you do with the fancy places what do you do with the the drive through stuff like that right so we had a theme every day and it was catching on and then right when that happened as you know the station sold and everything got turned upside down so yeah that's when Ray and i used to run around town in the morning doing fun stuff and it was uh, it was a blast yeah, I, w I think that's my first taste of being in front of the camera because, like, for example, <laughs> right. it, was, it was like wing day, and I think you guys said we, I, we ended up going out to track one that whole morning and just ate wings in front <laughs> yeah. of the camera the whole morning. That was great. Yeah, and you know what? I remember your first couple of times you could see you were a little nervous, but then you started realizing, look, this isn't really the hard stuff. This is fun stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, great, have fun with it, man. Plus, you know, we're, I know we're live, but there was me and Sheila and Skylar. We'll, yeah. we'll bail you out. Then you took it and just went with it, you know, and you were great, you know, and yeah, plus you, you made it fun, yeah. you know, so anyhow, Ray and I, that was what early, uh, mid to 2008, 2010, yeah. right yeah, around the, there. Yeah. I think it was right 11. before my daughter was born. So yeah, it was like, yeah, it was, it yeah. was, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so crazy. anyhow, so yeah, that's when Ray and I used to work together. Yeah. That, that was, that was good times, man. Good times. But mm -hmm. I wanted to talk, we wanted to bring up the topic of the local sports scene on everything going on now because of the pandemic. I mean, you got, you have the uh, Chihuahuas games canceled. You had uh, no, uh, no fans for a while at the locomotives. And even uh, last year with uh, towards the end of the, the school year, baseball and so, and, and spring uh, spring sports were, were canceled. What is being the sport, being being director of sports over there, at KBC. What what have you seen um, with the upcoming stuff with the school districts and all the other um, sport fall sports coming up? Well, the 
the school districts, in my opinion, have hit it out of the park. I mean, they, they did this the right way and still are doing it the right way. Um, some individual schools have actually taken it a notch higher, like Eastwood High. Mm -hmm. um, there are rules that are set, sent down from UIL, and there are also some rules that each school district has implemented. Eastwood High School, for example, took it a step further. They had bracelets going with who's, who's been tested, who hasn't been. And if you walk on the field and your bracelet doesn't match everybody else's, that means you forgot. It doesn't mean anybody did anything wrong. It might just be, oh, I, oh yeah, I forgot, I forgot. Because sometimes it's easier to forget. You're not used to waking up and getting your temperature taken, you know, every morning and filling out a form. So sometimes, you know, that would slip through the cracks. But schools like Eastwood uh, were like, no, no, that, that's impossible to happen here. They got the the stations everywhere. Of course, it's it's changed a lot of things. And I'll tell you, the, so far from where I can see, the one positive that I think has come of this is I think everybody's realizing we don't need to play as many regular season games. Yeah. Now, a lot of coaches and athletes might get mad at me for saying that, but take the colleges right now, for example. It doesn't really apply to UTEP because UTEP, and that's another school that you need to take your hat off to. Remember, they lost, you know, their first three games of the year. Mm -hmm. Nevada, Texas Tech, Texas, they didn't know what they were going to do. And they were able to go find schools to play. I know they're not big schools, you know, in the, you know, from the big conferences and they don't get their paydays. Right. But Abilene Christian and Stephen F. Austin, hey, we got them on the schedule. They got somebody to play. But my point is, they really didn't need to play Stephen F. Austin, didn't need to play Abilene Christian. They played Texas for the payday, which UTEP, New Mexico State, those paydays are important. But I think what everybody's taking away from this, here, look, the Pac-12 is about, or Big Ten is going to do an eight-game schedule. And I've been saying for years, this ridiculousness of the first three weeks of the season where Alabama plays Troy and it's 85 nothing in the third quarter. <laughs> okay, Troy got their payday. Right. But from a sport and competition standpoint, what good did this do anybody? Troy's got 25 guys hurt. They're not on Alabama's level. So I think what we're finding out is maybe it is okay to not play your preseason or play your pre-conference or your pre-district or whatever that might be. And a lot of coaches at the high school level might get angry with that because, you know, you get to go play in the tournaments and you leave town and maybe you go to Midland or you go to Phoenix, whatever it might be. And I think that's great, but I think we're finding out that maybe we don't need to do that uh, from year to year. And I, and I hope they still do because I know the kids enjoy it and so do the coaches. And from a, an El Paso standpoint, when you get to play against the out-of-town competition, it makes you better. And in case you haven't noticed, I remember a time when as soon as an El Paso team, no matter what sport, with the exception of maybe – Franklin or Coronado tennis, you know, or golf, we couldn't compete with anybody. Right. The, in the big sports, you know, uh, uh, football, uh, basketball. Now we're beating those guys, you know, winning playoff games, two, three, or four of them, you know, so it, it actually is paying off. But the one thing I think we might be able to take away from this is maybe we don't need so many games, you know, yeah. and I think that yeah. that's, that's the one thing that's jumping out at me right now. Well, uh, I know, um, some of the, I know the high school volleyball started and I know as of right now, they're only streaming them online for the parents and everyone wants to view because they're not allowing anyone in gyms with the kids. And I know the kids on the sidelines having to wear masks before they go into mm -hmm. play. Um, what do you think, uh, uh, do you, what do you think of a timeline is like for, um, I guess it's probably depending on the, you know, the governor and how the numbers go, but do you foresee any like parents, uh, Going to going actually to volleyball games and basketball games in the future here for high school. Yeah, I, I absolutely think it's going to happen, and I think it's going to happen sooner than people think. the The reason they're not allowed now, the main reason is you have to give first the administrators and the teams and the coaches let them get into some kind of a flow, let them see okay exactly what can we and what we what 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 can we do and what we can't do. You know, let's first get, get our teams used to this new protocol with the masks and the distancing and staying out of the locker rooms and the disinfecting. Let's get that down first. Once we get that down and we check with each school, okay, you guys are all right? Is it okay to start? Because remember, SISD is allowing essential personnel in there. So you do have your trainers, you do have your administrators. So there are people there. It's just not the 
per people off the street. So give them a chance to get that down. Okay, how many exits and entrances do we need open? Check with the fire department. Okay, is it okay if we have just one exit and one entrance? There are a lot of things that are going into this. That's why our, our district athletics directors have been great. You know, they, they, they're getting it down. And I think once they get into a flow and they realize, okay, this is what we can and can't do, then they'll start trickling fans in. As of right now, we don't know if there'll be fans at, at high school football games yet. Now, remember, the season starts on Thursday, October 1st right. with a handful of games. There's three games that night. And then the Friday after that is the first full night. We'll have to wait and see what it's like and how, uh, how it is with the virus in our city around that time. But right now, the school districts are doing it right. Let the, the teams and the coaches and the administrators, the referees, let them get into their flow. And then once they're comfortable, okay, now we can start bringing some fans in. Since we, got, we have our act together, now we know how to instruct everybody else and the people off the streets. So I, I think it will happen. I, I just, the one thing I just hope is that, like, I, I know people, they, 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 they find the masks and things uh, com uh, uncomfortable. But I, I just want to push the, the, I just want to push home the, the notion and everything that if, if you're going to go see your kid play or go see someone play at, at one of the high school games, just please follow the rules so you can keep everyone safe and they can continue to play. Cause like, just like last year it was unfortunate that the fall, like the spring semester sports didn't get to finish or even. Yeah. I mean, I just do it for the kids. If you don't like wearing the mask, do it for the kids. That's, that's what I want to push home. Cause like every, a lot of people are doing it the right way. I mean, just, just, I, if anything, do it for the kids. I, I just, I just want to be able to see these kids play and, and, you know, compete. I mean, bring some normal, let, let the, nor let some normalcy come back for these kids. Yeah, you, you are a hundred percent right. I mean, I'm seeing it now because I've got two stepsons playing on three different uh, local baseball teams mm -hmm. in a, in a private, you know, uh, it's not a city league. It's a private league that uses city fields and I'm seeing it now. And the rule is clear. You cannot come in here without a mask. The problem is it is very difficult to enforce that. I mean, you actually have to envision somebody has to walk over and say, excuse me, ma'am, but our rule is you have to have a mask. Now that lady comes, that's my constitutional right, but now we got a whole fight. Right. You know, and now you're fighting in front of little league kids. So you can put the rule out there. You just have to do exactly what you're saying. And that is just play by the rules. Yeah. Just I make it simple. I know it's a pain. Mm -hmm. Wear the mask. Watch, it's for 90 minutes. Yeah. The games are on time limit, 90 minutes. Wear the mask for 90 minutes and go home. So you're right. And, and I do see people who aren't wearing them. And it kills me to not want to walk over and say, you guys, listen, you know, you're not being fair to us. You know, yeah. you're kind of being selfish here. But if I do that and we start a fight, all people are going to see is the sportscasters fighting with people over there. <laughs> That's what you're going to see. Yeah. You're not going to want to know why or what happened or what started it. But the fact is, I'm fighting with somebody. Now I got to go talk to my boss. Okay, what happened? Well, maybe you should, you know, it's a whole giant mess. The, the thing to do is exactly what you're saying is, this is the rule, just play by the rules. Yeah, I, I, I just hope everyone does. And I, I, just, I, I just want, I guess we just hopefully that people can follow the rules and just get the numbers down and ha make sure these kids finish up this, this school year the, not unlike the way they did last year. And let me just ask one thing. I'll talk to, uh, a little bit about how, about UTEP football, if I can. And now that's, we're three games in. Um, how, have you, have you had a chance to go out to the Sun Bowl and see any of the games or what's the protocol for media uh, to, for, for the games out there? In the Sun Bowl? Yeah. Yeah. Th there's, there's a million of them. I'll, I'll just, I'll just give you the main ones, but to answer your question, no, I haven't gone out and I haven't gone out for safety reasons. And it's not that I don't trust anybody, but I spend a lot of time around senior citizens these days. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the in-laws and the grandparents who are coming. So the last thing I wanna do is put myself in a position. I'm not worried about me, Ray, and I know that sounds arrogant. I'm not worried about catching anything. If I catch it, I'll deal with it, it's my problem. But that's being selfish. I have to consider people I'm going to be around. And at this time of year with um, my eighth grader is now back uh, in class in person, started about a week or two ago. I have to be conscious of that now. I'm around him. I give it to him. He gives it to a, uh, an older teacher, whoever he might be around, or whatever it might be. So I'm thinking of other people. So right now, there's no reason for me to go to UTEP games in person. I'd, I'd rather have this COVID you know, blow over and I'm able to watch him on TV. But the protocols and people forget are, 
a lot different uh, for media now. You know, people think, oh, I can't go here. Well, it's the same with us. Yeah. We have rules for us as well. We can't go on the field with a camera. So now the video that you're seeing on TV, A, either comes from UTEP, who is allowed on the field because they got their video crew, mm -hmm. or our guys who are shooting the game, but they've got to stay on top. They've got to stay in one section of the, the end zone, which hurts because if UTEP is driving, let's pretend for a second we're underneath the, and most people know, know the Sun Bowl. Let's pretend for a second we are underneath the scoreboard, the giant jumbotron, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, if UTEP is driving away from us <laughs> toward the other end zone, that camera can only zoom so far. Right. So it changes how the highlights look on TV because you're seeing UTEP score, but all you're seeing are their backs. Right. Whereas if we were on the field, we'd be in the end zone. They're coming at us, and you can see their faces and their numbers and see the play develop. So that so that that that's changed. Uh, you know, taking your temperature, filling out a form. Uh, parking passes are done now electronically. That's why there's no exchanging. Okay, back and forth, but hand to hand. You know, so there are some protocols that that we follow, but we we make do just like everybody else. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I'm, I'm, I feel the same way. I mean, we, my family, we keep a, a small bubble too. I mean, cause you know, we have um, my aunt and uncle who watch the kids and we would, I wouldn't want to get mm -hmm. it, spread it to them. And then they get really sick or vice versa. Exactly. So exactly. I'm totally with you on that. We, I, I do go to work still, but I try to, you know, be as safe as possible when I do have to go in, but uh, right. it's just, it's just something you got to do. You got to practice. And a lot of people like, I just wish they would just, just help out a little bit, but I mean, you know. Just help out. Yeah, I mean, how the, the way I look at it is how am I supposed to sleep at night knowing I transferred the coronavirus to my 80-year-old mother-in-law and now she's not doing well? Right. I need another headache. You know <laughs> what I mean? It's, it's, yeah. it's hard enough now dealing with, you know, the protocols both at work when you're out covering things, you know, plus the everyday life stuff. I'm just like anybody else. I've got a mortgage payment you know, bills, work in the yard, front yard, backyard, remodeling, just like anybody. I'm going to add that to my headache list all because I wasn't smart enough to wear a mask. Right. Or wasn't, you know, uh, I'm too selfish to think of other people. So it's just, it's just not worth it right now. These are three non-conference games that don't mean anything. Now, I got to tell you, if UTEP's playing for a conference championship, home against UAB, it's going to be hard to keep me away from that game, you know, <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll analyze everything. Okay. Where are we with Corona? It looks like it's disappeared. No pass a little bit. All right. Maybe I go for a half, you know, but, but as of right now, there's no reason for me to put myself in that position and endanger other people right now. Yeah, that's true, man. I, I'm glad you and your family are still staying safe. Is there anything else you want to add about, um, you know, high school sports, local sports, anything like that you want to add before we end today? Uh, the, the one thing I do want to stress, and, and I've said it on TV a million times, I uh, haven't done so, too much of it online, but one thing I just want to stress to everybody, and it might be those, those people who just aren't regular news viewers or don't watch the sportscast regularly or from time to time, our school districts have been amazing. You know, Maria Kennedy over there at EPISD, uh, JJ Calderon at SISD, um, you know, the ADs at Fabens and Clint, man, I call them, they get back to me right away. And everything that they're doing makes complete sense. And listen, they want fans there. Yeah. You know, you know, some of them actually have kids that play or grandkids, whatever it might be. They want fans to be there, but they're doing the smart thing and they are doing everything they can. In fact, uh, for high school volleyball, when the season started this past uh, Thursday night, mm -hmm. no, Friday night, uh, this past Friday night, uh, I didn't know this, but it was right there in an email. I just didn't see it. You had to call the school district and give them the name of the person that was coming to shoot video. Mm -hmm. I missed that part. So our guy showed up and he called me and said, hey, they won't let me in. I'm like, why not? And they said, well, we needed to be on a list. I don't know. So that, that turned into a, hey, I got to make a phone call for you real fast. But my point is there, that's the right thing to do. Yeah. You know, let us know who's coming. How long are they going to be here? I mean, they're, they're doing it right. So that's, that's one thing I want to leave you with is our school districts, when it comes to the high schools, they are doing everything they can to, to keep your child safe. And it's great. Well, Lou, uh, thank you so much for joining me today on today's episode. <laughs> I really, really, Anytime. Uh, it's been way too long since we've gotten together, but hopefully when this whole thing is all over, maybe we can hang out and do this in person. We'll do another live interview though in person. 
call me anytime, man. I'm a phone call away. I'm at one of two places. If I'm not at work, I'm at the baseball fields. It's that simple. Nice. Okay. It's, it's that, I'm not easy to find. Thanks so much for joining me, man. All right, pal. Good seeing you. Bye, everybody. Thank you.